So in this video, I wanna take a look at the rule for implication. Now implication in a lot of systems, especially a intel M system is a derived rule. What that means is you don't really need this particular rule. You can prove everything implication does using other rules that you might have in a system. But implication is a nice rule to have because in a lot of cases it simplifies certain proofs. So let's start by stating the form or structure of implication. What this rule states is if you have a conditional, let's say five and psi, then you can reason to a disjunction. So it would be not phi or psi. So if you have this conditional here, you could transform it into a disjunction. Similarly, it says that if you had a disjunction where one of the disjuncts is negated, you could reason to a conditional. So if phi, then psi. Uh, because of this, we can say that, you know, we have one way here where we reason to this disjunction, and then you could see we're reasoning to the other direction. We could simplify our presentation of the use of implication by writing if we had a conditional, if phi then psi, then we can reason to this disjunction, not phi or psi. And we wanna represent the fact that we can reason the other direction from this disjunction to the conditional by using this single turnstile, but in the other direction. So what this is saying is that you can reason either way. You can take this formula, if phi then psi, and reason to this disjunction, or you could go the other way. So these two formulas, or this uh, particular presentation of the rule, is a what's sometimes called a rule of replacement or equivalence rule. Another way of putting this is that these two formulas are interderivable. So what's going on when we use implication? Well, if we let our conditional, something like if r then w stand for if it rains, then I get wet, and we let our disjunction that we're reasoning to, something like not r or w, then what we're doing is reasoning from a sentence like, if it rains, then, then I get wet, to a sentence like, either it does not rain or I get wet. And what's happening here is we're saying that this conditional says the same thing as this disjunction right here. That these two formulas are just two different ways of saying the same thing. They're true and false under the same circumstances. They're equivalent to each other. And so it's perfectly legitimate to replace the conditional here, if it rains, then I get wet, with this disjunction here, either it does not rain or I get wet. Now for some people, this is not quite obvious, so it's helpful to look at, let's say, a truth table to see that these two sentences here, at least with respect to logic, are equivalent. So let's look at one. So here's our truth table here. We have the conditional, if phi, then psi, and we see that's false just in one case, in the second row here. And then we have our disjunction, not phi or psi, and we see it's also false in one case. And in all the other cases, they match up in terms of truth values. So we see that these two formulas are equivalent, and so that motivates the use of the implication rule. Since these two formulas are true and false under the same circumstances, since they're equivalent, we can replace the conditional with this particular disjunction. Now let's look at an example of implication in a proof. So at line one, we have P then Q, and you could use implication on line one to derive not P or Q. We would cite the line that we're using, which was line one, and then indicate that we're using implication. And of course, since you can swap one formula out for the other, we could do the other direction. We could reason from this disjunction at line two back to the conditional that we started with at line one, writing if P then Q, but at this time we're use, using line two implication here. Let's look at a more complicated example of implication. In this case, we're looking at a negated conditional. Now recall that in implication, we can take a conditional and replace it with the formula that says the exact same thing. So with respect to line one, what we can do is take that conditional that's found in those parentheses and replace it with a disjunction that says the same thing. The key aspect here to keep in mind is that we wanna make sure we negate the antecedent of the conditional right there. So in our disjunction, we have not P rather than simply P. Now I wanna look at one more example of implication. Let's say we had the formula not, not P, right arrow S. 
Now let's make it not s. So here we have a formula. If we were to use implication on this, recall that the rule states that if you have a conditional, you can transform this formula into not phi or psi. And so when we apply implication to not not p, then not s, the formula that we would write is not 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 p or not s. The thing to focus on with respect to the use of implication is we have a conditional, and this phi here can stand for any formula. In this case, phi stands for not not p. And so it says to take that formula and add a negation to it. So you see we're adding this negation to phi. And so even though p is already doubly negated, we're gonna add a negation. With respect to psi right here, it says don't do anything to it. Simply represent it as the right disjunct when you use implication. So even though not s is negated here, all we're gonna do is take not s and write it as not s as follows. We're gonna keep it, leave it alone. Whatever formula this is, we're going to just move it to the disjunction there.